How's it going, everybody? Andrew Zarian here, Wrestling Observer Live. We're here every day, Monday through Friday, 3 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. Eastern with Jim Valley, and Sundays with me. How's it going, everybody? Calm week, right? No fights, no brawls, nobody quit, no last-minute changes to things. This was a very calm week for professional wrestling, but a fun week for pro wrestling. We had Dynamite, we had... SmackDown last night, we had Raw, we had Collision. What did I say? SmackDown last night? SmackDown on Friday, Collision last night, which I still have on here. I'm re-watching it while we're doing the show. I had a couple notes I wanted to talk about. Collision was interesting. It was a very different Collision, very Lucha-heavy Collision. I, you know what? I was into it. I wish they sold it as that. That was a Lucha version of Collision. Very, uh, it was interesting to see all the talent on that show and the changes that are coming to that show. Also, Brian Danielson alluded that he's wrapping up his career and this may be his final year as a professional wrestler. I don't know how much I believe that, but man, if this is his final year, I think we're in store for some, a series of unbelievable matches. Uh, I, you know, it, it's quite evident that we're looking at Danielson being a prime focus on the show as a replacement for Punk, and I welcome that. As many of you know, he's my favorite wrestler in the world. I talk about it all the time. Nobody's better than Brian Danielson. Also, SmackDown highlights. There was a little bit of a jab from LA Knight towards Kevin Nash last night. A lot of Kevin Nash. Kevin Nash uh, reference on Friday. And then a Kevin Nash-like situation for Big Bill on Collision. Which I'm into. I like to see him on TV. He's a local boy here from Queens, so I got to support him. We have this and a whole lot more to talk about tonight on Wrestling Observer Live. Stay tuned. Wrestling Observer Live Sunday edition here on Sports Byline. Last night was Collision. I'm anticipating it does a much better rating than the week prior, even though there was a UFC show last night. But last week's rating, not great. <laughs> Very low. Uh, you know, this is, this is what people feared uh, when... Football begins, especially college college football, and everything else happens in the fall. The numbers are going to fall, and we saw that last week. I don't, I did not anticipate it to fall that much. I, I would say that the that the healthy low number should be in the fours, the low fours, four ten, four twenty five, but under four is not great. And you know, there's a lot of changes coming here. They don't have their flagship guy on the show anymore. He's gone. And they have to refocus. And we saw a little bit of that. We saw the changes to this show. The brand split or soft split or whatever you want to call it is over. WBD was notified early, late, I'm sorry, late last week. Not the week that just passed, right? Right before the pay-per-view. So I guess that Friday or Thursday, prior to All Out, uh, there was some sort of conversation at WBD was kind of told like, hey, listen, this may be a direction we're going. Nothing was said like this is this is it. And, you know, that's a good indicator of what was going to happen with Punk or it was happening or what maybe was going to happen. But I think they had a plan here. Uh, this is it. This is the plan, right? This is not a pay-per-view week. Uh, they're changing things around. There's more talent that was not on the show that is on the show. It was a very Lucha heavy show also, which... Uh, I think, what was it? The Lucha blog on Twitter tweeted and said, I think I booked Collision. <laughs> and Tony responded by saying, hey, listen, I was an avid reader of your blog. And there's 100% there's influence from your writing uh, on, on that show. And you know what? That's an amazing thing to say. Uh, I think that, that is, that's fantastic. You know, it just kind of shows you more about how Tony thinks and where his influences are. Uh, it's the same as me. You know, listen, I th those blogs and those websites are, is what influenced me in professional wrestling uh, to, to start following it as heavily as I do and to tape trade and to do all that stuff. You know, 1998, 1999, 1997, even before that, I was on, I was on the news groups. John, our producer, you remember those news groups? Those BBS news groups? You remember what a pain in the butt they were? Oh, man, I used to go in the wrestling ones, and that's how, that's how I used to get the Observer sometimes. 
Don't tell anyone. Don't tell anyone. Don't tell Dave, please. He'll ask for some money from me. Don't tell him. But, uh, you know, I, I, I think it's fascinating to see how a guy that grew up in the same generation as me when it comes to professional wrestling book pro wrestling with the same influences. So I, I'm, I'm, I'm digging that. But it was a very Lucha-heavy show. Did you like that, Matt? Did you like the show being, you know, having so much Lucha repre representation on it? I, I, I did. Um, it was just different. It, just, it was very like, different. Pacing was different. Yeah. Um, there was a lot of stuff that happened uh, last night that uh, I think they're starting. You can tell they're resetting. That was what, what was one of my biggest takeaways. They're resetting how they're presenting the show. Yeah. Well, there's a couple things here. One, are you going to have a title on this show? Right? Because we had CM Punk with his, you know, the real world's championship. Which I, I don't know if that was by, by design or by force that we came to that point. But we did have another title. And it was cool to see this bizarre title, you know, this AEW title with an X over it being defended in that company when you have an actual world heavyweight champion. I thought that was a very strange thing. I didn't dislike it. I thought there was something there to it. And obviously, it, was go it should have been MJF and him in a match. I would say a ladder match. But, you know, there were reasons it did not happen. And it didn't look like there were plans set for that to happen. At least for the time that CM Punk was there. So, you know, this is going to be a very different show. Uh, they are going to change the focus of this a little bit. But I didn't dislike last night's show. But I also don't think that there was, you know, it was, a, it was more of a rebuilding show, which is fine. We got the AEW International title match between... John Moxley and Action Andretti. So already you're seeing, you know, the changes happening with Moxley on there. Uh, it was, you know, it was a warm-up match. Moxley defeated Andretti to retain the title. We also saw the AEW TBS title defended. Chris Stratlander defended against Robin Renegade, which, by the way, I love that name. I think it's such like an old-school name to retain. And we saw Jade Cargill come back, which is good for that show. Bullet Club Gold. Defeated Aerostar, Dos Del, Dios Del, I'm sorry, Dios Del, uh, I'm going to, I'm so bad with this. I'm so bad at this. And gravity, I'm not even going to attempt it. It's t it, my, 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 my tongue isn't doing what I needed to do here. Don't smirk, MJ, at that. He's smirking. I see my producer on the camera laughing that I can't pronounce this name. Uh, I thought it was a wild match. This was the big Lucha match here. But, you know, we're also seeing more characters in promo. You know, CJ Perry is there now. The former Lana. Says that Miro is stubborn for not accepting that she helped him. She said that maybe it's time for her to re retake the mantle as the hottest manager in wrestling. Uh, I hope this is not leading down the same path it did for Miro <laughs> with that Bobby Lashley angle. Does everybody remember what the ending of all of that was? Didn't it lead to some sort of relationship between Liv Morgan and Lana? It did. And then it just stopped. <laughs> it was bad. It was bad. <laughs> it was bad. Was Paul Heyman. It was Paul Heyman in a in a fever dream, I think. Oh man, Paul was <laughs> Paul had a hundred and eight fever. <laughs> just writing insane wrestling storylines. Can I kind of can I kind of add something here? Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. So maybe maybe they were embarrassed by that whole angle and they want to try to do it right this time. I don't think I so. Mean, <laughs> I think I think everybody uh, was embarrassed by that angle. I thought it was dumb. Yeah, it did it nothing terrible, for anybody. But I'm saying if they could if they had their way, how would they have booked it? Maybe they're maybe they're trying to do it their way this time. Yeah, it's just a thought. I don't know. Uh, next segment, we're going to go more into this card also because uh, I want to take some time with the final stuff with the Danielson stuff because this is. This is the most interesting part to me and what they're doing with Danielson here. Again, once again, I'll say it. My favorite wrestler in the world. That is a style that I enjoy. So if I'm a little biased towards the Danielson stuff, so be it. I'm, I'm actually enjoying something. Let me enjoy it. Don't poo-poo on my parade. I could say that on the radio. There's nothing wrong with that. Uh, I, th I think CJ being there is great. I, I think it's a good addition for Miro. Um, you know, I'd like to see them paired up and not feuding. But, you know, here, here's my thing about Lana, right? I always thought they had to do, they had a great moment with her. 
when she was kind of like flirting with uh with who was it who was she in the feud with um uh was it Dolph Ziggler Z it was Ziggler yes 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 she, mm. I think what they should have done was the classic bonk on the head okay she gets bonk on the head and look she's the ravishing Russian she gets bonked on the head she's this all-american CJ Perry and you could have them go back and forth and you, she could be in this love triangle but she's two different people I thought that was a brilliant story nobody used it at WWE they did not listen to guess that. what yeah you know who's doing it now? Tony who's doing Storm? it now? <laughs> Tony Storm. But no, but is she going in and out? Yes. Oh, she, she is. is. I've only seen her in. I've never seen her out. She she can't remember what, what story she's telling. She's like, I have so many performances. It's, it's similar <laughs> to what you're saying. <laughs> I love that. I love that uh, character for her, by the way. So it's good. It's great. It's uh, yeah, she says a word that I can't right say. Now. on. I she's, Her catchphrase, I can't say it on the radio. <laughs> I can't say it. Uh, listen, there's a lot of moving parts here. CJ and Miro. Uh, we got Ray Phoenix and Angelico with Serpentico on the outside. Uh, I thought that was a really good match. You know, this is a very interesting time for this company. And they have to capitalize on this with more pay-per-views coming. There's the possible max tie-in here that's coming soon which I'll have some information on that in the next segment because I spoke to somebody over uh, at WBD and they're working on something. Whether or not that's for AEW, I don't know. I, you know, obviously, I think it is, right? I know, I, I would assume it is, but nobody has said it to me in that way. So I want to talk about that a little bit and what you guys think also. Hit me up on Twitter, at Andrew Zarian. Send me your questions, send me your thoughts, send me your suggestions. Because I want to hear from you guys. And we'll be back right after this on Sports Byline, Wrestling Observer Live. Stay tuned. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. We were talking about Ray Phoenix and Angelico. Lucha edition of Collision. Very good match. Ray Phoenix is great. AW World Title Grand Slam Eliminator Tournament semifinal match. Roderick Strong defeated Darby Allen. Interesting how this is weighing out. I think Roddy's going to win this thing. It's not going to be Joe. I think the match is him and Roddy. And then you save Joe for the pay-per-view. So here's what I want to talk about. Tony Schiavone comes out. He's interviewing Brian Danielson. He said he promised his daughter he'd wrap up his career when she was seven. She's now six. He said that he wouldn't go quietly into the night. He would kick everyone's head in. He said that uh, this is going to be the most epic year of his career. Uh, you know, Danielson came back early from this injury to replace Punk. He challenged Zack Sabre Jr. at Wrestle Dream in October. This is a match people have been questioning and wanting for the last eight years or so. Maybe more than that. MG, when is the last time we, first time we I mean, look? I got a, I got a Zack Saber Jr. Uh, Evolve poster right behind me. Uh, fantastic show I was at with him there. I, I th people have wanted this. You know, there is obviously a a style comparison between the two. There is, uh, you know, it's the lineage of Danielson and his style of wrestling and uh, the technical aspect of wrestling. And and I think Zack Saber Jr. has done a tremendous job of continuing that. And I think he's an unbelievable wrestler. This match is now set up for Russell Dream. There's going to be other obvious big matches set up for this thing. But bringing in Zack Sabre Jr., I think this is a great idea for this. To answer your question, um, I believe they they had were set to do this at the first... Um, uh, oh, I can't think of the name of the uh, forbidden show door? now. But the, yeah, Forbidden Door, the first Forbidden Door show. And then Danielson got hurt, remember? Yeah, and they were they were set they were going to do it then, and then they didn't, and of course they didn't that show that didn't. show didn't have Danielson on it, Omega on it, and and Punk on it, right? Correct. Those yeah, three was, were gone. What a different show that would have been. So Omega, I don't know who and Omega it still was going to write. Yeah, it still did great, mm -hmm. but you know, obviously it was going to be Tanahashi and Punk, and then Saber, uh, Zack Saber Jr. and Danielson. But Danielson. who was Omega going to face? Do you, do you remember well, I, that? I don't even think they thought about it because he was gone. He was still quite far from being recovered. So yeah. 
he was right in the middle of his time that that nine months or whatever. It Interesting. Was. So I'm curious who it would have been. Maybe you they didn't done, even have it. Listen, you could have done o Okada. You could have done something else. You know, fascinating. There's a lot of these what ifs in AEW because of injuries. So he's cutting this promo. Ricky Starks comes out with Big Bill. And Ricky's talking about how the spotlight is on the other guy once again and not on him. Uh, they're doing somewhat of a Shawn Michaels and Diesel thing here. A lot of comparison for Big Bill with Diesel. What they're doing with Kevin, what they did with Kevin Nash. I think this is great for Big Bill. You know, he has something. He has the presence. He's a giant. You don't have too many former basketball players from Queens on your roster. He's seven feet tall. Did you know you cannot teach that? I don't know if you knew that. You were waiting to pull that one back. I was out, waiting. To, you? Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so they're 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 continuing with Ricky here. Uh, then you saw the save come in with with uh, Moxley, and Moxley starts getting his butt kicked by Big Bill. So the match is going to be Moxley and Big Bill. You'll probably have Danielson and Big Bill again. And I I'm very curious how different it, this time that feud will go. Do you remember how much people hated that feud in WWF WWE? See, I'm stuck on that Jim Valley stuff. Jim Valley did a thing on 1993 wrestling, and I'm and I've been saying WWF since yesterday. You think this will be better, MG? Between Big Bill and uh, Danielson? Yeah. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I think you know when you take them out of, I think just a matter of fact of dumping the style of WWE and the formulaic television match that they have to have. These guys get creative, and especially with Danielson, I trust that he will. Yeah. Um, uh, do something, do bring, give us something good, even if it's a, a short match. Listen, if this is his last year of wrestling, do you put the title on him? I think you do. I think you should. You you have to. And and it's mm -hmm. and it's fascinating to me that we have not had that. You know, he got hurt. He went away twice, right? There were two instances he 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 went away. And he's also not the guy to politic to become the world heavyweight champion and be on TV and have his own title, right? He's not that guy. But there is something to be said about having him as a world champion. And this may be a good opportunity to do something. You know, Here's if you want to take the title off of Max in some way, uh, you know, if it's Adam Cole, then, then Danielson, you could do that. You could come up with something interesting here. Now that you have pay-per-views every month coming up. I got an idea that might that might help here. Yeah. Um, and and you and you said there's no title no title on Collision in the last segment, but John Moxley is now the you know, international champ title. What if you did a program? We they did a uh, inner squad pro program, and uh, Danielson gets that international yeah, title I mean, and just runs with it and just are, runs are you and going then retires it. Are you positioning the international title as equivalent to the world title? In that, in that case, like, I think you is this is this like a universal title and a world title? Because if that's the case, um, it's possible Most you certain, could do that. You just have to up the lineage and have him Moxley and then Danielson hold it and really, you know, stack some wins and really make it a big deal. Yeah, and and then and then he can just when he's done, he can just say, "I'm done," and here's your title back. Yeah, and, I mean, listen, the only know, only way that would work, honestly. Right. If you if you and this is a great this is actually something I have not thought about. You take that title, you elevate it. Right. And I think I think the elevation was obviously there. With Orange and what he did. With that title, he defended it every week and he had great matches, but he wasn't defending it against like Adam Cole, MJF, uh, CM Punk and, and Kenny Omega. He was defending against some really good talent. If you elevate that, Moxley now has the title, and Moxley's defending it to you know, as a as a world title challenger, uh, you you have an opportunity to do that as a secondary title. I don't know if you want to. I don't know if they want to. I should say, I don't know if it's gonna if it's gonna do anything. Uh, it may be a little bit of a crutch here, and where you don't put the title the world title on people that you want to put the world title on. You know, I I don't know. I don't. It, interesting concept but i do definitely think danielson should get that title i you know this this if you got one year left how many of these matches do you want to see i want to see danielson and omega again i want to see danielson and uh adam cole 
I want to see Danielson and Mox. I want to see a lot of these matches. Danielson, Zack Sabre Jr. is another one. You have an opportunity. How about Danielson and Eddie Kingston? Danielson, Eddie mm-hmm. Kingston. You know, and mm-hmm. once There's... again, once again, we did not get that Danielson Punk match that people want to see. Not the WWE version. We once again did not, it, it, we're, we're t- we were robbed of that opportunity. By just some crazy people. We also main event was AW World a title Grand Slam Eliminator Tournament semifinal match. Samoa Joe defeated Penta. So now we're, we're getting set up for Grand Slam here in Queens. Interesting. I'm curious about those ticket sales for that show because they are not selling. It is very expensive. Those tickets are very, very expensive. I'll be there. MG will not be there. I think Rich is going to be there too from the Matt Men podcast. I think my wife Jess is going to come because she comes every year for Grand Slam. And uh, my attorney Bob. I think he'll be there too. Interesting collision. Thumbs up, thumbs down. What do you give it, MG? I give it a thumbs, thumbs up. De- definitely a lot of stuff that happened. Yeah. Um, and we should mention... Oh, oh no, we, we did. Never mind. I do want to mention this, uh, Dynamite, that segment on Dynamite with Swerve and Hangman was fantastic. I know a little bit about that. I know, I know who put that segment together. I, you know, and I would tell this person straight up, uh, that it was not good. If it was not good, I would, I would, I would be honest. I would never lie. And I have to tell you, this segment was fantastic. I thought it made Hangman, you know, it showed that he's, he has not been that hungry. And I think a lot of people have thought that to themselves. The fans, you know, where's Hangman in this mix? He's taking a back seat and he just got this big contract. And that was the story. That's where it was saying. You've gotten fat. You've gotten rich. You're sitting on top. You're holding a spot from me. If I had your opportunity, I would be the first black world heavyweight champion in AEW. And you know what? That resonates because he is really good, right? And he is a guy that if you plugged him in that scenario, he could have been world champion. So I'm really looking forward to this feud. I think Swerve is fantastic. I, I Hangman is great, obviously. Uh, this is a program that I want to see, and it's a unique match that we haven't seen before. This is what draws me to AEW. The bizarre mismatch of talents that you normally don't see working together at a high level. You know, not, not a WWE five-minute match. And I'm going to talk about SmackDown, too, because they were some really good stuff on SmackDown this week. I'm not talking about a quick five-minute TV match. I'm talking about, you know, giving these guys like 14, 15 minutes on TV and them doing a killer, killer match and getting over with everything. You know, that, that's what I like about this company. I don't know what happened to my to my show right now. I'm watching Dynamite on my TV. I did not have this on. We're in, I'm in a bizarre world here. I'm watching Roddy on Dynamite here. Uh, I very interesting time period for this company. And when we come back, I want to talk about WBD a little bit. I want to talk about what's going on with Max. I want to talk about the pay per view schedule. I do have some punk news on the WBD side. I, I did say that I was I was done with this, but I think we're winding down here. We got a couple more weeks of little bit punk news, but it's not going to saturate the entirety of the show. When we come back, all this and a whole lot more. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. Stay tuned. Wrestling Observer Live Sunday edition here on Sports Byline. Hey, follow me on Twitter. I'm going to plug it again. At Andrew Zarian, you can follow me. People ask me, what else do you do? I do a show called We're Live, Pal, with Garrett Gonzalez for the Wrestling Observer website. I do a show called Matt Men. I've been doing it for, oh, man, 12 years, 13 years at this point. It's fun. It's a fun show. We talk about wrestling and everything else you could possibly imagine that goes on in my head. It's like 70% wrestling. And then the rest is just terrible impersonations and terrible jokes. I highly recommend you listen to it. Uh, 
I want to talk about this a little bit. I want to talk about WBD because this is what I was getting asked all week on Twitter on what WBD thinks about the CM Punk situation. It has been interesting because normally I hear so much chatter and it's been very quiet, especially from key people. Um, as far as I know, they, they totally understand what happened and why Tony had to make that decision. Uh, there's no negativity towards Tony or AW. I haven't heard that, oh, man, here are the wheels coming off. That has not happened. Uh, they're just they're sticking to it, and, and they're continuing. I, I don't think this is as much of a negative as a lot of people have envisioned on the Internet, that there's this doom happening now that Punk's gone. You know, the, the guy that was going to lead them to this new contract is gone, so they're going to, you know, maybe they're not getting that billion dollars, whatever that number is. Uh, I can tell you that they are extended to 2024, so... We don't even have to worry about doing a contract today or tomorrow. Uh, a lot of that has to do with uh, them just opting in for that extension. Uh, obviously, there's some money that's coming in, maybe a little bit more money. But the big question here is, okay, so you are going to put, you're going to put this thing, uh, you're going to be doing pay-per-views every month, essentially, right? Every month there's going to be a pay-per-view. I have a huge storm here, so I may lose you guys. I'm going to peek out my window. It is torrential downpour here in Queens. Uh, you know, you, you have so many pay-per-views now, right? You have Wrestle Dream. Let's do the math, okay? What are we at right now, MG? You got Revolution. You got Double or Nothing. You got, um, you got Forbidden Door. You have All In. You have All Out. You got Wrestle Dream, and you got uh, Full Gear, right? Is that where we're at? Seven? Yep. And then that's not counting any ROH shows. That's not that counting kind of any separate. quarterly right. ROH shows. So you have seven AEW pay-per-views a year. I expect that to go up higher. Um, just from what I've heard. I would expect this maybe not monthly. Maybe you have nine pay-per-views or ten pay-per-views a year. Maybe you have 12 pay-per-views a year. But if you have 12 pay-per-views a year, are you willing to pay $600 to watch wrestling every month? Are you going to pay $600 for the year? I don't know. And, you know, those all-out numbers are going to be quite telling. To do a pay-per-view week after week, one week after the other, and... You know, I, I think the number is going to be close to 100,000. I think the all in number is going to be higher to 200 based on what I knew from those preset, uh, the advanced pay per view buy numbers. So, I mean, you broke halfway, right? If you had 300,000 people buy your pay per view, you got 150, 150. So there you go. Obviously, it was the same people, a lot of them, but uh, it's still a positive. But what happens when you have a show every week, every month? What are your pay-per-views going to be then? Your big four will do great. Or hopefully. But what's what's a full gear going to do for you in November? Are you going to do 145,000 buys? I would hope so. So a lot of this, you know, this comes into play, right? Everything is changing. Or the other option is you have you have this synergy with WBD. They're very involved. And I said this before, uh, you know, I hear the chatter from Fox and NBC, more USA, right, uh, about WWE. The, the integration as far as the integration of WBD's interest level in WWE, AEW and how they discuss it and treat it is something very different than I've seen from NBC, Universal, and Fox. They're very invested in this. And it's telling when you hear the conversations around it. It's, it's, it's quite telling, you know, that they care about this product. And the HBO conversation has come up multiple times. The last update that I have regarding what HBO will be doing. Oh, HBO, I keep calling it HBO. I'm sorry. I can't stop calling it HBO. What Max is doing is I was told the fourth quarter there's some sort of test being done. Something is happening in the fourth quarter, whether or not they're launching whatever they're going to launch 
or AEW's on there, or they, you know, give away a pay-per-view on there, or they do a special on there, or they're actually, you know, they have the pay-per-view integration on Max. I don't know. I just know that there's something I, I was explained to me that they're doing in the fourth quarter. Listen, I hope it's putting AEW on there and doing a test run to see what they could do. Or maybe it's it's a di- it's a whole entirely different thing. But it was during a wrestling conversation. Uh, but again, I I sometimes you can't dig too much. You know what I mean? They tell you something and you say, okay, cool, and then you you build it on that. It was something in passing. So listen, I think that's the way to go. Have everything there. Have your archives there. I I you know I this morning I was I was yelling at somebody. <laughs> At AEW in a friendly conversation. I was like, dude, I miss having the spotlights, like those color lights on the crowd. I think it's too bright. I think that crowd is way too bright now, right? So I was trying to find like a screenshot to send this person of like what I was talking about. Just like the purple ambient lighting or the blue ambient lighting when they would have it on the crowd. Like they do that during promos now, but not matches. I couldn't find like, how do I, where do I go? Like as, where do I go to watch all the archives? Is there one central place? No. I could go on the, I guess I could go on the TNT app or the TBS app. They might have some stuff. It's not on Hulu. AEW doesn't have a central hub for this. We're going to find out soon. This is an important key piece to your business. So I'm very interested in this. This is, this is the stuff I'm into, but I, I expect there to be some sort of H. HBOC again. Max integration coming up uh, hopefully next year, early 2024. SmackDown last uh, Friday, this Friday, not last night. Shotzi and Charlotte defeated Io Sky and Bailey. Asuka appeared ringside, stealing the title from the timekeeper. Uh, after she would face off with Io, they're going to be facing off in two weeks for the title. I'm into this match for sure. This is Fantastic. probably the most anticipated anticipated women's match in a um, long time. If you, yeah, if you take the and they're doing it on SmackDown, that's the only bummer of it. But if you take the, um, uh, if you think about it, if this would have happened like in 2013, back when we, this was Kana and Io Shirai, uh, that's what the, I think people are hoping for. Hopefully, we get something close to that. Listen, EO is remarkable. So is so is uh, Asuka, right? Everything that they've done. I, I definitely hope that they have the match that we want to see here. I hope they give them time and they have a match that everybody's very interested. LA Knight, in the main event. LA Knight defeated Austin Theory. You know, this Austin Theory uh, stock has been going down more and more. Listen, he's young. He has the look. He has the he has everything that WWE wants, so I'm not too concerned. But right now, it is the LA Knight story. From January to today, this guy has risen tremendously. It really he has been the MVP of the year, if you think about it, as far as like fan attention goes. He hasn't had a five star match. I'm not saying you know uh, his matches have been uh, the best of the best, but I think as far as character development and getting over with the audience. He's been unbelievable. I told you guys, I saw that. I was in the garden. I saw it in, you know, I saw it twice at the garden. I saw what, what what that first initial reaction was. When was that? Late February, early March at MSG. That crowd exploded for him for a house show. Teen boys, 9, 10, even 12. You know, it was just like boys from like 7 years old to like 20. We're losing it for him. And then that SmackDown that he didn't even appear on. He came before the show and did a segment. Crowing nuts. Every week they're going nuts. Uh, LA Knight came out. He cut a promo afterwards. And he did a reference. He, he referenced Kevin Nash indirectly. So Nash criticized him, right? He said something like, oh, he's doing like rock cosplay or something like that. Is that what it was, MG? Uh, pretty much, yeah. Pretty much that was it. He was, he, he. Put it down and said, be original or something. I, something like that. I forget exactly yeah. what it was, but that was the gist of it. LA Knight did the promo where um, where the big boys play and something about an adjective, right? Because that was wrong. Look at the adjective. It's a verb. So he called him, you know, he kind of made fun of him on that, which was interesting. 
Uh, I'm into this. I don't know where you put him. I don't know who what he challenges for. I don't know what title he wins. But you ha you you have something here that's organically getting over, and WWE does not like that normally. They don't do well with organic popularity. It doesn't fit their narrative. And does LA Knight fit in a main position in this company? I think you got to give that U.S. title to him, don't you? I think you have to give the U.S. title to him or an IC Absolutely. title. He needs a title well, for sure. The, the IC title is on the other show, and it's kind of that. That's dude, that's an, his own thing, which is great too. But the U.S. title, Austin Theory. I, you know, I know they're trying with him, but man, LA Knight. I think if LA Knight held that for a couple months and they went back around to Austin Theory, he would be hotter if he won it after, say, Ma WrestleMania. You know. Yeah, I think uh, that'd be good. He won it back then. Yeah, but yeah, I think I think LA Knight would just elevate that title. Judgment Day defeated the Brawling Brutes, and AJ Styles defeated Jimmy Uso in 15 minutes and 55 seconds. This is gearing up to uh, maybe an AJ Styles and Roman match again. Listen, they have great chemistry, but I I think the reality with Roman right now is that a lot of people, by the way, are poo pooing on the Bloodline stuff, right? Have you seen that? People are getting a little tired yeah, of it. it. It's starting to, well, it's because he hasn't been on TV and it's, and it, it's, they're stalling and they're just, they're teasing us with the next step and we're not getting it. Well, it's like we're in the batter's is, box and, yeah, but here's the and problem. we've fouled off 20 balls already. It's a positive and a negative. You're telling us this man will never lose. He's unbeatable. Mm -hmm. Uh, I don't believe that AJ can beat him. I don't believe anybody's going to beat him until WrestleMania or or a mega pay-per-view. So it kind of does hurt it, but you got to show some sort of vulnerability here. You had it with, we had it with Jey Uso. A lot of people thought that that match was going to go in a different way, even though they knew, really, right? Uh, you had it with Sami Zayn where there was this doubt casted. You had it with Cody that there was this doubt casted. There's no doubt casted anymore at all. So very interesting what they do here the next couple of months for WWE. And guess what? Guess what month it is? It's September. Before we know it, it's October and November. And then now we're talking about Royal Rumble again. And then the CM Punk conversation appears again. Will he show up? <laughs> How dare you? We're going we're gonna to go into a commercial break here. Wrestling Observer Live. We'll be back right after this. Stay tuned. Wrestling Observer Live. Final segment of the show here on Sports Byline. Let's do a Quick current lineup of Grand Slam. You got the AEW World Champion, MJF, defending against the winner of the Grand Slam World Title Eliminator Tournament. Either it's going to be Samoa Joe or Roddy, Roddy Strong with his little boots. AEW Women's World Champion, Soraya defends against the winner of the uh, Eliminator Tournament, which is going to be uh, Tony Storm, Britt Baker, Sheeta, or Nyla Rose. Chris Jericho versus Sammy Guevara. Claudio versus Eddie Kingston. Title for title. It also could be taped for Rampage, that match. Raw preview for tomorrow. Women's world champion Rhea Ripley defends against Raquel Rodriguez. Dominic Mysterio is banned from ringside. Cody will be appearing, and Gunther celebrates breaking the intercontinental title record that was held by Honky Tonk Man for all these years. Unbelievable. I hope he shows up. Do they bring him out? I don't think they're going to, but that's just me. <laughs> Listen, It'd be cool. It'd be different. I, it would be cool. It'd be different. Uh, I think Gunther's doing some amazing stuff, and if he's a world title uh, challenger, I'm very much looking forward to seeing his run here. Interesting week for pro wrestling. Also, Dynamite. We're gonna get the uh, we're gonna get the title eliminator tournament match between Roddy and Samoa Joe. AEW International Title. John Moxley defends against Big Bill. Four way women's title eliminator match: Britt Baker, Sheeta, Nyla Rose, and Tony Storm. Hangman versus Brian Cage. Don Callis will re reveal his next masterpiece, and that's all for that. Guys, do me a favor: follow me on Twitter at Andrew Zarian. Send me your feedback. Love hearing from you guys. If you're listening on Sports Byline or on YouTube, wherever you're listening, hit me up. Let me know your thoughts. We're going to be back next week with this and a whole lot more to talk about. Obviously. Until next time, bye-bye for now.